In this video, we're gonna try to develop a bunch of limit laws. Different rules that are gonna make it easier us for us to compute more complicated limits by breaking them down into easier limits. So for example, suppose that what you had was the sum of two different functions, like e to the x plus x cubed. And then you wanted to figure out what the limit was as x went to some particular value. Can you do something about that? Can you use the fact that this is a sum to help you in some way? So I'm gonna give you an example of a few different functions. So what I have here is a function f of x that goes up here and goes flat. I've got a g of x, goes long, goes down. And then what I've sketched up here is the function f of x plus g of x. It's a new function, but it's a function that's built out of these other two ones. And you'll notice, for example, that if I take the value of f at zero, which is zero plus two, zero plus two is two, so the start of f of x. Or here, it looks like this is height of one, and then we've got a height of two, and then we've got a height of three, which is one plus two. So indeed, everything seems to work out relatively nicely. That is indeed the graph of f of x plus g of x. Now, I'm gonna focus, just for fun, at what the limit was if I chose the a equal to a half. So I'm gonna go and look up here all of the halves. So if I was just gonna do f of x, then I could come around here and I've got this one point there and the limit of f of x at the value of a half is just gonna be equal to this 0 0.5. So I'm gonna say the limit as x goes to 0 0.5 of f of x, this is equal to, looks like, a 0 0.5. All right, lovely. Okay, so now let me do the same story, but I wanna look at it for the g of x here. So a g of x, it looks like it's got this height up here of two. So I'm gonna say that the limit as my x goes to 0 0.5, but not of my f now, now of my g of x, that this is gonna be equal to two. Uh, that is that the limit as x goes to 0 0.5 of now my f of x plus my g of x, the sum of those two functions, that what it appears to be is equal to the 2.5. Now what I want you to observe is that a half plus two is equal to 2.5. In other words, it looks like that the limit of a sum is just the sum of the two limits. So indeed, this is the formula that we have. The limit of the sum of two things is the sum of two different limits added up. That I can sort of take this, this single limit and distribute it over this particular summation sign. Or at least, that's what it appears to be. Is this formula always true? Well, let me show you a specific example, all right? Let's do the limit as x goes to the value of, I'm gonna do the sum of two functions. It's gonna be the function one over x and the function minus one divided out by x. Which one over x plus minus one over x is just a different way of saying that this is just gonna be equal to zero because indeed they cancel. So then the question is, is this the case that I can say that this is equal to these two individual things, the limit as x goes to zero of one over x plus the limit as x goes to zero of minus one over x. Is it the case that this is true, that this thing on the right hand side is equal to zero? However, the problem is that neither of these two limits actually exist. Indeed, the graph of one over x is something that looks a little bit like this. And then the minus sign is going to flip it for the other. This is something where the limit has this vertical asymptote at this particular point of x equal to zero. So this does not exist. And this other limit does not exist. So this whole formula is actually kind of nonsense in this scenario because this doesn't exist, doesn't equal any number. This doesn't exist, it doesn't equal any number. Yet we're saying that they add up together to be equal to the zero. So what's the problem with my example? Because I like my formula, we were well motivated by it in the previous example, but, but for this example, it appears to be nonsense. And what is needed is an extra qualification. This is true if we have the property that both the limit of f of x and the limit of g of x individually exist. 
And that was the problem here. These individual ones did not exist, and so you sort of got this nonsense formula. But if you add this property, then we get this true statement. So this is one of these so-called limit laws, a law that allows us to break up a more complicated limit into a simpler one, but there are many. So for example, if you have some constant, some just real number like seven, the limit of seven times f of x is just seven times whatever the limit was of f of x. Or we had this so-called additivity rule here, but we can do the same thing with products. We could say that the limit of a product is the product of two different limits here. Again, under this initial assumption that all these individual limits exist. The same thing with quotients. We've got to check for non-zero here, but if I have an f of x over a g of x, this is the limit of a quotient. It is the quotient of a limit provided we have this additional assumption that the one on the bottom, the limit of the g of x, is non-zero. So these add up to be a bunch, not all, but a bunch of the different limit laws that allow us to break up more complicated uh, limits.